we are focusing on polynomial division. I've shown you quite a few examples of how to do it by using the long division technique. There's actually another technique that we can do called synthetic division. And in my mind, it's just a condensed version of the long division. So when given the choice between long division and synthetic division, I almost always choose synthetic division. And I have found that my students do pretty much the same thing. I rarely have students that prefer long division over synthetic division, but it is a possibility in case you are one of those. Let us talk about synthetic division. I have the exact same example that I started with in long division, this here. So I'm going to come up with the exact same answer, but let me show you how my new process is just a shorter process of what I have written here. Before I actually get into the process, notice that I have my divisor highlighted here because if we want to do synthetic division, our divisor has to be in very specific format, format that mimics this right here. My divisor has to be a linear polynomial, meaning degree one. And my coefficient on my x variable can only be one as well. So it has to be degree one, and my coefficient can only be one as well. So specifically, it can only be in the format as x plus or minus a number. If it is something other than this format here, then synthetic division is not an appropriate process, which is why we need long division in the first place. If it is in this format, then you are more than welcome to use synthetic division on these type of problems. And so let us actually discuss how to do synthetic division at this time. Okay, I said that it's a condensed version of long division. And so basically we take out all of the variables and we only focus on the numbers. I'm only going to focus on my coefficients. So my coefficient here was one and then two and then negative five and then negative six. So those are the numbers that I'm going to write down. One, two, negative five, negative six. I'm going to draw my box a little bit different than the long division, but that's a minor detail. Okay, now what's to divide it by? Well, I know that I'm going to do something with this here, but I know that I'm only going to take the number. The common mistake that students do is to take the number that you see, which is negative one. That is not what we're going to do. What we're going to do to figure out what to divide this by is we take this equation and we set it equal to zero and we solve for x. So if I add one to both sides, that would give me the solution of x equals one. So I need to divide by my zero and that's the vocabulary that means what number gives me zero in this equation. So in this case, my zero happens to be positive one. So make sure you divide it by the number that gives you the zero rather than the number that you see. All right, now that we have it set up, you can see how easy our synthetic division process is going to be. The very first thing that you do is just bring down your first digit. So I just bring down my one here and then you multiply. So I multiply one times one and that goes in this spot here. One times one gives me one. Now what we do is we add these two numbers here. Two plus one gives me three. And then your process, just like it did in long division, repeats. So you're gonna do the same process over and over again. So you take one times three to put in this spot here, and one times three gives you three. And then you combine these two numbers to put there. And so negative five plus three gives you a negative two. And then you repeat in multiplying. One times negative two goes in this spot here. So one times negative two gives you negative two. And then you add these two numbers to put in that spot there. Negative six 
plus a negative 2 gives me a negative 8. And so we have finished the synthetic division process. So you can see that the process itself is quite a bit easier. But now we have to figure out, well, what does this mean in polynomial format? How do we put those variables back in? And if we can figure out that, then you see that this process should be a lot easier than your synthetic division. Okay, the way that we put this back in, no matter what, whatever number that we get here, our very last number, that's always going to be our remainder. Then whatever we have here, that's going to be our quotient. So what we need to do is we need to put our x's back in. So we look at our initial polynomial, and we're going to put our x's back in starting with one less degree. Notice my degree of my original polynomial was cubed. So I'm going to start my degree of this polynomial to be one less, which happens to be x squared. And then you just keep going in descending order. So this is an x squared. So this is plus. My next variable is 3x. And then I could put a plus in here. But notice my constant already has a negative. So my constant term is minus 2. So what our answer is, is the quotient down here at the bottom. My 1x squared plus 3x minus 2 plus my remainder of negative 8, divided by the divisor. Now, not just the divisor with the 1. Remember, I'm trying to put my x's back in. So the whole divisor that we divided by, so x minus 1. So we have completed this exact same example, both by long division and synthetic division. Let's go ahead and look at the similarities between them. Of course, the similarities are we have the exact same answer between my two examples here. But let's look at the numbers. Notice here I have a number of 1, 3, negative 2. Look at my numbers here. I had a coefficient of 1. I have a coefficient of 3. And I have a coefficient of negative 2. So virtually, it's the exact same process, but as we can see, in synthetic division, we don't have all the x's to deal with. We just have the important things, meaning the numbers. Okay, let us do a second example of this. Now, let me get this set up for you, and then I would encourage you to do it on your own. So first things first, notice that my polynomial is not in descending order. So I would encourage you to do so. So I'm going to put my 4x cubed first. But also notice that I'm missing an x squared term. So let me write that as 0x squared. And then minus 28x minus 7. So this is going to be my original polynomial. And then my divisor. We want to know, is this in the correct format? And can I even do synthetic division? The answer is yes, because it's degree 1, and my leading coefficient here is 1, so I am allowed to do synthetic division. We need to figure out what we're actually going to divide it by. If I set this equal to 0 and solve for my variable x by moving my 3 to the other side, that gives me the 0 of x equals negative 3. That's the number that we're going to divide it by. So now we need to set up our synthetic division. So writing down the polynomial coefficient of 4, 0, negative 28, negative 7. At this time, I want to draw attention to my second coefficient of 0. I put that in there because I was missing the x squared term. To help us understand this, let's look back at a long division example that was missing a term. At that time, I encouraged you to put a 0x in there, but we could actually have done that problem without doing it. It just might have been a little bit more work to keep it lined up or can keep it consistent. When you're doing synthetic division and you're missing a term here, it is absolutely required that you put that 0 term in there. If you do not put in any zeros for missing terms, you will get incorrect numbers. 
So you absolutely must put in zeros for missing terms in your original polynomial. Okay, we said that we're going to divide this by a negative three. And so now since I have it set up for you, I encourage you to pause it and see if you can come up with the answer of what you get when you synthetically divide these two polynomials. Okay, let me show you how quick this process can be. You bring down your first digit, you multiply, four times negative three gives me negative 12. I add, zero plus negative 12 gives me negative 12. Multiply, negative 12 times negative three gives me positive 36. I add, negative 28 plus 36 gives me eight. I multiply, eight times negative three gives me negative 24. And then I add negative seven minus 24 gives me negative 31. So the process is quick and painless, but what does this actually mean? Remember, whatever this is here, our last digit, that's always our remainder. And whatever we have here is our quotient, is our answer, but we start one degree less. So my original polynomial started out with an x cubed, so my answer is going to start out with x squared. So this is 4x squared minus 12x plus my constant term of 8. So if it just wants the division answer, then I have my quotient plus my remainder over my original divisor of x plus 3. And so there's my answer for that. If we wanted to do this by using the division algorithm, that means my original polynomial, 4x cubed minus 28x minus 7, is equal to our divisor of x plus 3 times our quotient of 4x squared minus 12x plus 8, plus our remainder, or in this case, since it's negative, minus 31. So I have set up the division algorithm here for you. All right, I'm going to end this video since I've worked through a couple of examples of synthetic division. And in the next videos, we get to start to see where we get to use this to our advantage.